What's up guys, Javier from That Racing Channel. So we're back at it with the R32 project. Just dropped off a bunch of parts to Andre, and we're actually, so today we're actually going to install the head onto the short block so we can complete the long block. So it's been a while since you guys have seen it, but this is our built, ready to go, cylinder head, ported by Chris at Porting Solutions. He's the man, did a phenomenal job. So we got this bad boy ready to go. Give you guys some shot, shot here. That finished real, real nice surface there. So we got this little badass project here. RB25 hotness. Nice little dots in here. Shout out to my boy Chris Lopez. He's gonna be sick. And here we have Andre's personal 240SX coming together real well. It's got the turbo on there. Shout out to Travis from Buish Performance. Did all the, uh, the fab work, the uh, piping here. Came out real sick. He did the manifold too, right? Yeah. Nice. Custom, custom exhaust manifold. It's looking real good. Like that's a template. Oh, nice. So smaller fuse box. Yeah. And fuse box. This is catch can up. all in one. And the catch can is gonna be in one. And then the pipe is gonna come through here and go to the intake. Oh, it's gonna look super clean. Yeah. Hell yeah. Really this is for drive-by wire here? Drive-by wire. Oh yeah. That's a new trend. Old school 240 with some new technology, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be sick. We'll keep you guys posted on this uh, throughout the GTR build process. Cause this thing is gonna be one to watch when it's ready. Here we're lubing up the studs here. So we got the short block here. Everything's just about ready to go. Big shout out to Spool Imports for that uh, 3.2 liter billet crank stroker kit. Also a big shout out to Herman from Platinum Racing Products. Everything went on smoothly, no issues. A lot of nice goodies. All right, so we got some of the parts laid out here that we're gonna be putting onto the long block once we're done uh, assembling everything uh, with the long block here. So huge shout out to everybody that came on board with the project. Uh, so we got some goodies from Hypertune here. That's Hypertune's race intake manifold. Actually doing a uh, 12 injector setup here. They gave us the rails are here somewhere. Rails are down there. Huge shout out to, to Pete at Hypertune. We got here Precision 7685 Gen 2. So this guy, huge shout out to Joe and the team at Precision. Always doing right by us and uh, supplying us with some bad, really, really badass servos. Oh, we got shop security coming. Hey buddy, what's up Onyx? So this is a custom, custom made manifold from over Pete over at Hypertune in Australia. Made specifically for, uh, or, or they, they fabricated it on an RB30 and uh, RB30 setup, basically RB30 uh, b bottom end and RB26 head uh, with the 7685 turbo. So should fit perfect. And a huge, huge shout out to Jet powder coating. They absolutely killed it. So we have it all wrapped up now until we get it on the car. So once we, uh, once we get the long block all assembled, we're gonna button it all up with this and we'll show you guys the final product here. So just a little teaser.
so much for tuning into our R32 GTR build series. We tried our best to document as much as we could on video, but some of the stuff that we weren't able to capture on video, we went ahead and documented as well as we could with pictures. So we're gonna show you some behind the scenes uh, details of some of the modifications that we made to ensure a greater success of the build. Now, while these are some smaller details, we feel they're very important to the overall success of the, of the R32 project. So first we have the Platinum Racing Products Engine Cradle. The Platinum Brace overlays and supports the factory main cab cradle, and it's just going to provide overall rigidity of, of the block, being that we're going all-wheel drive, um, and you know, with the amount of horsepower and the goal that we're making, it's going to help it withstand some of that power. So one of the first modifications we did was upgrading to a VQ oil pickup tube. We had to do a little bit of modification in order to get this to work, and we also welded on an extra brace onto the pickup tube to just provide some extra support. We wanted to try to avoid a common oiling issue with the RB, and that's the oil pickup tube uh, either breaking off and also not moving enough volume of oil from the pan. So the VQ pickup is not only a little more sturdy, but it also moves a little bit more volume of oil for us. So once we did all of our modifications and fitted the VQ oil pickup tube to the platinum brace, we went ahead and test fitted it in the oil pan to make sure that clearances were good uh, and we wouldn't have any issues there. So the next one here is a very necessary and very common modification for the RB oiling system, and that's an extended sump. So we got a custom made sump from Rips Racing. So once we took our measurements and made sure everything would fit properly, we went ahead and started cutting up the original uh, oil pan and proceeded to weld on our Rips Racing sump. The Rips sump was really good quality and also came with some already pre-done baffling on the inside. It should really help us under race conditions. So once we got our oil pan uh, completely modified and ready to go, we went ahead and cleaned it up. That way we can get it prepared to install our OS Geiken diff. So the next modification is an issue that we actually ran into because we are running an RB30 block. Because of the difference in block height from the RB26 to the RB30, we wouldn't have been able to retain using some of the bolts that mate from the oil pan to the bell housing of the transmission. So the oil pan can actually act as a brace for the block to stop it from flexing under high horsepower conditions. But when using the RB30 block, some people just leave these bolts out. So it would take us down from eight total mating to the block down to four. We wanted to make sure it can mate up as factory as possible as we're gonna be running this thing pretty hard and we wanna to try to avoid any future issues. I guess it can be debatable whether or not this will make a huge difference, but we think it's worth the effort that we put into it. So in order to accomplish this, we cut the ears off of the factory oil pan and we moved it up about half an inch or more. That way it would align perfectly and be as factory as possible. Pictured here, you can see the final assembly and we're super happy with how the end result came out and now it should bolt up perfectly. Uh, because of the height difference of the RB30, we also had to do a little bit of modification to the front of the block. We had to drill and tap. We had to add a provision for the timing belt tensioner. Factory RB30 block does not come with a provision for a knock sensor, so we went ahead and drilled and tapped the block to go ahead and add a provision for a knock sensor. 